Here's an odd question for you. What does a German engineer who may or may not have died in 1913 under mysterious circumstances have to do with modern aviation or you? Surprisingly, more than you might think. This episode is brought to you by Rexair Professional Pilot Academy of Sebring, Florida. They've got everything a flight student needs to be successful. So give them a call, 309-397-6191, or drop them a line, info at rexair.net. You may never have heard the name Rudolf Diesel, but you do know what a diesel engine is. This book is actually really interesting. It's about Rudolf Diesel, how he came to invent the diesel engine, and maybe how he died or didn't die and why. I won't call it a great book. It's a good book. And it's only not great because the conclusions it makes in the end are supposition. But we're not really talking about Rudolph and his death or maybe not his death. We're talking about the engine that he developed because the diesel engine was infinitely better than the gasoline engines available at the time and way better than the steam engines that were still in use at that time. So what does this have to do with aviation or you? A plausible question, I applaud you for asking it. Excellent work. We did an episode not too long ago about 100 low lead gasoline, which we use in many, many general aviation aircraft. And it has become a bit of a global issue because lead is not good for living things. The problem is, Higher horsepower engines don't run well on unleaded fuel. They have detonation problems. It just doesn't produce enough octane rating to be able to produce that level of power. Now, we do have mole gas available to us, and there is UL94, and there is Swift Fuel, and it may or may not be available where you are. But what if I could tell you there is a widely available fuel worldwide that can power the vast majority of the general aviation fleet and it is unleaded. Well, that fuel does exist, and it's probably for sale at your airport right now. It's called Jet A. And you'll say, but I don't run a turbine engine. Well, maybe you don't. You probably don't. But a diesel engine runs on Jet A, or peanut oil, or biodiesel fuel, which is made from used cooking oil. Diesel engines can power anything from an oil tanker to a submarine, to a pleasure boat, to a general aviation airplane. And believe it or not, they're out there right now and they're looking pretty good. Let's consider the Diamond DA40 NG. The NG, I think of it as no gas, it runs on a diesel engine. Now you can get a Diamond DA40 that runs on 100 low lead and that's fine, it performs very well, but it has the 100 low lead problem that may go away in the future and not so long in the future, depending on how you feel about that situation. There are very strong opinions on both sides. The video we did on the topic got a lot of comments, many of them in favor of getting rid of lead, many of them absolutely opposed to it. Some people saying 100 low lead will never disappear. But what if that's not even the issue? What if the challenge isn't the 100 low lead, but the engine we're running the 100 low lead in? Today, as we speak, there are a number of engine options that are diesel that run on Jet A, produce excellent power, are very fuel efficient, and actually have some real advantages over a gasoline engine. For instance, they don't need magnetos. They don't have an issue with vapor lock. They don't have an issue with carb ice. They don't have a mixture control. It's frankly a much simpler engine to operate. There is an interesting tweak to the, to the diesel engine as opposed to the gasoline engine. Of course, we have a TBO on gasoline engines, time between overhaul. At some point in the future, based on usage or time, that engine will need to be rebuilt or overhauled. It's going to need new parts. It's going to have to be specced out. The diesel does and doesn't have that problem because the diesel in aviation use has a TBR time between replacement. Because diesels run at a higher compression ratio, you really want to get rid of that engine at a certain point. It may still run fine. You might be able to put it in an airboat or use it in some other application, but it's not going to be good for aircraft once it hits TBR. But what if you could, like the DA40NG, cruise at a speed comparable to what a 172 might 
crews at, but only be burning five gallons an hour. That's absolutely possible with a diesel engine. And because Jet A is available pretty much anywhere, you won't have the problem of landing at a field someplace where they don't have the specialized fuel your aircraft needs. And you don't have the problem that some unleaded fuels have where there may be additives that affect the seals or lines of your tank and fuel system. That's not really an issue with Jet A. Now, I understand you're saying to yourself, oh, sure, that's great. The Diamond runs on a diesel engine, and it is a proven power plant, but but I run a 172 or, or a PA-28, a Cherokee, a Warrior, or something like that. Well, you're not necessarily out of luck there. When you get to TBO on their airplane, you might consider going over to the Continental CD-155, a diesel engine that can be STC to put in your airplane. Delta Hawk is also working on certification for their diesel power plant, which would go into Cessna 172s or even 182s. Diesels are out there. They are available. They do use unleaded fuel, and they really do get the job done. The challenge for those of us in general aviation is the same challenge that Rudolf Diesel's contemporaries had back in the early 1900s. Diesels are different. It starts differently. It runs differently. There are no spark plugs. It's just a different system, but it's a very efficient engine. And just as back in the early part of the 20th century, people had to adjust to the use of a diesel engine. They were not trusted initially, but when's the last time you were on the highway and saw a big rig going by with a gas engine? No, they use diesels because diesels can produce a lot of power and a fair amount of torque for relatively little fuel burn. Look, this may not become mainstream, and it may not become something you really want to look at. But for those who are concerned about the lead in aviation fuel, and really concerned about the possibility of using a lower-octane unleaded fuel in a high-powered engine, a diesel might be a really good option to consider. And the fact that companies like Diamond make a very, very modern aircraft with a glass panel and a composite fuselage and a really sharp wing and a diesel power plant that can burn as little as five gallons per hour, less than a Cessna 152 in cruise, well... That's kind of impressive. It might not be for you, but it might be for someone. And I'll bet if you go down to your local airport at some point, someone's going to come up to that line guy and say, hey, can you top me off? And by the way, I take Jet A, not 100 low lead. Make sure you get the Jet A in there. And that's a really good point. If you do run a diesel aircraft, you might want to accompany the line guy out to the aircraft and make sure they're not making an assumption and putting 100 low lead into your airplane when they really need to be putting in Jet A. It's something to think about. It is an alternative that's available right now today. And as production increases, as economy of scale kicks in, it's entirely possible those diesel engines will come down in price. Jet A tends to be much more stable in price than 100 low lead as far as I'm concerned. And Jet A is far more universally available than the various unleaded fuels that may or may not be available on your airport and may or may not be approved for use in your airplane. So give it some thought. Long-term planning. Is a diesel engine in your future? It just might be. And then you can hold your head high. And when somebody complains to you that you're a, you're a general aviation pilot and you're burning all this leaded fuel and polluting our area, and you can say, not me. I'm not burning one bit of lead. I don't run on leaded fuel. I run on Jet A, just like the big guys. And maybe they'll start bitching at you about chemtrails, but that's a whole other thing. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Catch you back here next time for more from Mad Props Arrow.